All right, looks like we're good to go. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, welcome everybody to our to our June 14 Development Planning Committee meeting. Um, we have an exciting, exciting. Uh, there's a lot of information um, in this, this one. This, one, this was a fun packet of information to, to look so at. Thank you guys. Um, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hand this over to, over to our CEO and uh, sit back and, 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 listen, and listen in. Uh, direct, Director Edminster, give us just a moment. Um, it, no it sounds like we're still having some audio feedback issues. I want to make sure people can hear it okay. And then uh, I also uh, am looking to see where our um, where this where uh, our staff person is that's going to be on the call. If you will hold just one moment, sir. I of, apologize. Of course, of course. Don't even worry. Let me just check. Is Ashley Goodrich on the call? Just one moment, director. Ms. DeMassimo, I'm checking in with her now. Okay, thank you very much, Beverly. Director Edminster, we will go ahead. Make sure I'm on audio now. Yes, we'll go ahead and get started. And um, I believe that uh, uh, Ms. Goodrich will be joining us here in just a moment. So, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, there are two items um, on the proposed board agenda consent items for committee. Uh, one is our transit asset management SDG policy and our plan revision and update. And the other is the equity analysis for route modification. Um, I think that you have been um, following, certainly on the route modification, the meetings that we've been holding around some of the um, analysis that we are doing with regard to the equity of those route mods and then also the route mods themselves. Largely, they've been certainly very well received um, in the public meetings that we've had. Um, I was in a meeting earlier today, and I've mentioned this in the other uh, earlier committee meetings today, um, that uh, with, uh, it was a, a GM meeting that FTA held with all of the general manager CEOs in uh, region four. And the notion of our transit asset management uh, system and the robustness of it and the completeness of it and so forth is something that FTA is really gonna be placing a primary emphasis on with all transit properties. Um, and something that we are in our reorganization are, are placing an increased um, uh, emphasis on. So I see that Ms. Goodrich um, has joined us, maybe, and we will um, we can walk through those agenda items um, here in just one moment. I think it's great. Everybody's so busy. I think that's so cool. No cool. No push back for me. Tell you what, I will. Um, I will go ahead um, and and it, I, at least while we're while we're waiting on her to be able to join. So every agency, as you know, has to develop a transit asset management plan. Um, and this is the uh, agenda item that will approve our revised one. Um, it's a part of a continual improvement process around preventive maintenance for all of our assets. And in this particular case, really focuses also on our fleet replacement, our low no emissions acquisitions, um, the infrastructure workforce training and the renewal that is necessary. Um, so it keeps us within that state of good repair that we know is absolutely necessary um, and is assigned to this committee. The second item, let me go through to it. And if you have any questions about it, we can answer those. See, well, so the, uh, if, if I, the transit, as, transit assessment plan, that's three year, Thing, right? 
Um, it can be updated as needed, but it is a it's one of the requirements of FTA, yes. Because I do remember, I do remember in 2019, you spent a lot of time working working on that. I believe that may have been the first first year that. And tell me if I'm wrong on this, but I'm I'm thinking back, thinking back uh, about to go. That was the uh, we created of at that point. Is that kind of like it's a fairly new initiative from from F Well, the the TAM itself is, but asset management um, and having asset management programming, I think, has always been a component, um, at least as long as, as I've been around in, in any of these infrastructure programs, including um, FTA. But I think it, the the uh, notion of acknowledging it as a TAM and so forth is a more recent development. Is that correct, Ms. Dumas? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. That's correct. Yes, then the, the next um, item that'll be on consent are those major service changes that we've um, accomplished or proposing um, that required an equity analysis to determine any disproportionate burdens. Um, and we have um, done that. Um, all the major service changes were analyzed per our transit service guidelines. Um, we looked at uh, expansion on to Victory Drive on 7F Forsyth, uh, reconfiguring the downtown 7D route um, that had been experiencing low ridership and then aligning the Route 25 MLK Westlake to provide better on-time performance um, with two peak vehicle frequency. Um, of course, this is a part of our um, um, focus, our always focus always has been on service reliability um, and the equity analysis determined that there were no disproportionate impacts. All right. And with that, that, is Ms. Goodrich available now, uh, Beverly, to walk through the three, um, the three other items, or I can do those as well. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Goodrich. I don't know. Maybe she's having some technical difficulties. I believe so. Okay. All right. Then I will. Um, I will also um, talk through the reports to the committee. Um, I think these are actually all very um, exciting updates, um, Director, and I, I hope that um, they are welcome ones for for you as well, or for for, for this committee as well. So the Garden City update uh, for quite some time. Cat uh, has been talking to Garden City about a potential service expansion, particularly focused on uh, Route 20, State Route 21. Um, we have had several meetings in the past quarter with Garden City, including meetings with the mayor and city manager um, for additional bus stops on existing service corridors and potential future transit service um, in the larger jurisdiction of the uh, CAP Special Tax Transit District. Um, really, really um, exciting conversations because Garden City is very supportive excited to consider these opportunities. And there's also some really interesting um, other components to this because they're doing some land use work and are particularly interested in how they might also bring in um, some of the like workforce housing and that kind of thing. But a particular emphasis on some of our earlier conversations with existing facilities they have that serve seniors um, and how this um, the finalizing this um, bus stop placement and service can um, better enable the, the access and mobility um, for those um, residents. So we are, we are very excited to be continuing that work. And this is just an update report that you'll be being offered um, on, um, on how that is, is moving forward. Next is the Uber. Um, as you, uh, we've, we've been exploring the possibilities of Uber with providing first mile, last mile service. Um, and that also is a topic that has been under conversation for a bit. It, um, we've had a little bit of difficulty in terms of um, under what sort of business models um, our insurance carriers would be willing to cover um, that service. Um, and so there's been a lot of um uh, conversation lately on how we use um, the um, potential for Uber technologies to provide for additional operational activity in reduced um, modified services areas, but also to do that in a way that would be acceptable from the risk management perspective of our of our uh, uh, insurance provider. 
So we've confirmed that our um, auto and general liability insurance would be in agreement to offer us renewal terms um, with a consideration towards the most recently proposed services. So we wanted to give you an update on that, and then we'll be bringing forward future um, actions and activities that will be um, acted upon by the board um, to in order to actually affect that service. Um, the, the next steps include requiring a finalization of the scope of work pertaining um, to that Uber services, <clears throat> including a required another required Title VI equity analysis. As you know, as we talked about a little bit earlier um, with regard to those Title VI equity analysis that we performed with regard to route modifications, that's also required um, for this as well. That's a 90-day review period. Um, and then... Um, uh, anything that would also be applicable, other analysis that would be applicable for full FTA compliance. So you can see the timeline that we've noted there. Um, it means it's going to be a little bit before we see um, the um, implementation of the um, Uber uh, service um, piece with what we're what we're already providing. But um, so it'd be around November before that first mile, last mile connectivity part would start. But nonetheless, we're making progress and we're make sure, making sure that we're doing things in full compliance with the FTA regulations. And then lastly, in terms of the reports to committee, um, the amenities update, there have been a number of requests um, from both board members and um, residents and the public uh, around uh, bus stop improvements. Um, we um, A timeline for this will progress over the summer but the planning staff has been quickly updating our bus stop database and looking at all of the technology issues across all platforms so that, for example, if we've got inactive stops that are still um, in the system, that we're doing the technology work that enables us to identify those so we can make sure that the inventory of stops that we're working with is accurate, up to date, and so forth with regard to the work that we're going to be doing. Um, Ops is recording operations, is recording where Clever needs adjustment for ADA stop requirements, stop locations, missing stops. Um, the maintenance is underway, and we did a Waters Avenue sweep um, to actually clean up all that area, look at whether there was any hazards in the area. Um, some shelters have already been removed, and new shelters are getting installed, and that was an area that was much needed for, for that kind of a really deep dive. Um, so we're working collaboratively together to check and confirm field data in the system and processing the repairs that are noted during these field reviews. And so within the next couple of months, the work will be um, completed at, as the stop, um, at the stop as procedural work is getting identified and tracked appropriately. Um, this validation of the system um, by the planning staff is um, across, again, being coordinated with all departments so that our amenities update for FY 2023 and budget purposes is up to date and can be more readily available for dynamic use, um, which is again, another tool that we really need. And is also data that's needed for the master transit plan, which we are very excited. I think you've seen in a recent snapshot, we've reported that we got five proposals in. That's a remarkable response to an opportunity like ours. We're excited about that. And the transit development plan, comprehensive operations analysis, and other CAP programs that are gonna be coming forward like the shelter art installations. So um, a really exciting and necessary piece of work um, and we're also working closely with the city of Savannah, excuse me, with Chatham County um, on uh, some particular areas that they've noted um, where shelter replacements have been much needed. And some of those are mentioned in the report as well. We're glad to uh, answer any specific questions that you might have about this or other matters on the agenda. Um, yes, Commissioner Adams. Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. DeMasi, oh, uh, yes, sir. concerns about the shelters in Garden City since we're talking about Garden City. Um, yes, sir. I've seen some people just standing out in the rain, so we, we need some shelters out in Garden City. Uh, yes, sir. Are Garden City open to new shelters or even adding some shelters? They are, sir. They're, 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 they're very open to expansion of service, to improvement of the current service that's there, including 
the stock shelter amenities and so forth. Um, and they are um, they are in, in a position and the conversations we're having with them is, you know, they want to be a financial partner and an implementation partner. So those are all, um, I think, positive um, developments for us with regard to a Garden City expansion as well. Great. That's great. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. The uh, question on the user experience or uh, the Uber Uber contract, how do we have any idea as to how that would work? Would I pull up a, a Uber through the Uber app or is that ha happening through uh, CAT? I do think Ms. Goodrich is with us now. Yet. Ashley, would you like to discuss how the Uber first mile, last mile would work? Hi. Hey, how's it going? Um, Very well. So to discuss- Ashley, you're gonna need to speak up. Speak up. Okay, can you guys hear me? A little better. Hello? Okay. So to discuss Uber a little bit, they, they've provided us with a couple of different options. Um, one of the options that we're looking at, it would resemble something sort of like a fare subsidy. And that would be where uh, for a first mile, last mile, you would utilize Uber's app in the same way you would use Uber at a, from a regular standpoint. However, that option will be there um, to link in from like, so if you could say I'm at this bus stop and I need to go home or I'm at home and I want to go to this bus stop. That then that's where the fare subsidy would would kind of click in. Yeah. And so part of, you know, if it's if it's a dollar fifty per trip on a regular bus ride, right. then you know, Cat is subsidizing a portion of their Uber trip to and from that first mile, last mile bus stop. Um, this the second option that we are looking at in terms of um, how to provide um, late night services or contractual services. Um, it, it's a little bit trickier because there was some discussion in 2021 about paratransit services. So there's some things that you can do where if you set up an email, uh, kind of an, like, a, like if you were a company, if you were, um, if you were a business company and you had a list of employees and you wanted to give your employees a certain number of rides, or you wanted your employees to have a certain number of rides available, then you can submit that list of employees to Uber. And then when those employees utilize Uber, then they're therefore also, um, you know, they can utilize the app a little bit differently than just a regular uh, person, you know, off the street. Um, where we're gonna be kind of continuing to look at these contractual requirements is that we want to make sure that we're setting this up for cat in the best way possible mm -hmm. and how to uh, bring this forward to the public in a way that is useful for the public and then also at the same time something that cat can manage um, with regards to um, like route suspension or zonal services when our uber contract start talks about providing a certain amount of service within a zone that's, that's a little bit of where the first mile, last mile comes in. And then it's also a discussion of what is traditionally referred to as microtransit. And if we remove a route from an area of our system, we don't have fixed route service in that area anymore. Then if you were to replace it with a microtransit mode, which contractually in this case could be provided by Uber, then the zone of that microtransit is where those things kind of come into play. A first mile, last mile bus stop implementation is actually more limited than a microtransit zone because the zone could be anywhere within a given area. So um, that's a little bit where as we put in July, um, the, the fare policy forward, and that is a 90 day comment review We'll also be working through the equity analysis that's involved to say, because there's equity analysis involved with, with updating your FAIR policy, and then there's equity analysis involved with anything that you're doing to change your current route system, your route service. So um, those are all things that we'll be bringing forward in the next few months. We'll probably be in, end up having a public meeting 
each month and uh i would say august september august. and october um to work to work through the different aspects uh of how this kind of can can go together i am i am interested in how that works because i i feel feel like i don't have the intuitive understanding of how they move together in a way in a way that that result in a um, um and kind of like a, a i'm not a big fan of slopes but um let's do uber everywhere and don't think we should believe me i don't think we should I think we should i'm up on that but it's uh but i am interested in seeing how it engages with our service our service and how you know really how a customer goes through the flow of 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 experience um and if it's and if it's if or if it's complicated complicated so i'm interested to to see this one I will say first mile, last mile connectivity and Uber, as well as other kinds of uh, complementary services are being used very successfully in lots of other systems. And so okay. I think I think that, you know, of course, every system's a little different. Ours is, yeah. ours is too, right. So um, what what works everywhere else might not work here. But I do think it's a great, great opportunity for us to explore, especially in areas where the access is not as robust. And this can be a way to get people to the sort of main transit system in a way that otherwise wouldn't have been quite as accessible or uh, available and so forth. That, that's our sense. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Did I have... um, I, I do want to apologize for the beginning of the call. Um, I know that we went through the memos as well as the items on the consent agenda, uh, but I do have a presentation I can go, go through quickly today if you guys would like to review it. Um, give me just a second to share my screen. Um, if everybody can see the cat planning screen. Uh, Looks great. Okay, so for uh, we, we'll just get into the CAT ridership for May. Uh, we'd like to point out that we have a 36% increase year over year from May of 2021. Um, this is significant and in, 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 in an increase from year over year um, where several of our routes are performing quite better even in the midst of the modified services that we have still been undertaking through the COVID pandemic. Uh, we want to point out that the Augusta Avenue 3B has increased 25%. Um, we want to point out that the 11 Candler has increased 66.9%. Um, the Route 14 Abercorn is starting to look uh, a little bit closer to its pre-COVID numbers at 15.9%. That's a 30 0.5% increase. And then we also want to point out that we do have significant gains in ridership on the uh, Route 25, 27, and 28. Um, the, on the DOT, the Route 74 site is, tr is uh, working quite well. It is the highest ranked route in our system at a 29 passengers per hour. Uh, the downtown DOT is one of our uh, lower performing routes at which in the July service change, we will be reconfiguring that route to uh, better promote the downtown dot and the stops that it will service. Uh, cat planning items for this month as Ms. Massimo uh, went through for you was the uh, July service change equity analysis with a uh, review of the major service changes that are being brought to the board for approval this month. Uh, that also is a renewal of the transit asset management plan, which is due to the FTA uh, every four years. We, we, try to, we want to try to renew the TAM plan on an annual basis, but it is due this year for 2022. Um, Garden City, as well as uh, our Uber insurance update, and then our fiscal year 22 FTA grant application submissions, all three grants that we we're working towards in May to apply for, we have submitted, and we hope to hear back sometime in the fall or the next year 
when those grant applications uh, may become awarded. The CAT Master Transit Plan Master Transit Plan will close, RFP will close soon, or in fact, I think it has closed almost by now. No, it's already closed actually. And we, okay. we got five proposals and the selection committee is already um, in review on those. Um, and we will um, meet with the, their, their rankings of the five proposals are due back to us toward the end of the month. And then on uh, the first week of July, we're going to have a conference call to collaborate the group together on uh, where everybody sort of landed in their rankings and any comments that we want to offer from the technical advisory group. Um, and then that will result in a recommendation that we'll be bringing back to the board for what is arguably going to be one of the most sort of a watershed moment for us. Very exciting. Absolutely. Um, and I think that everyone here in this committee will be excited for it because we'll be uh, having uh, a lot of opportunities for everyone to um, sort of put, give their input into the, the master transit plan. Um, One of the other things that I would mention really quickly too with re re related to both the master transit plan and uh, some of the other work, I know Ashley mentions it several times in here talking about grant applications and submissions. Um, you know, um, it, it's tempting when grant notices come out, it's tempting to go any grant is a good grant, but that's actually just not true, especially when you're looking ahead to constrained budget times and the need to be, um, you know, incredibly, not just fiscally prudent, but fiscally effective. So making sure that what we do go after, that it all fits together, that there's no duplication and redundancy in, in grant efforts, but that they are coordinated in a way that they deliver a system level of improvement or a system level of um, activity. Um, and, and that's one of the things that we're doing now is doing a scrub of some of the things that we already have in play against some of the things that we have coming up and making sure that that kind of really effective coordination of both expenditure and system level um, planning analysis, that those things are really being, um, I think, focused in a way that we, is much, much needed. So very exciting time. Um, to sort of roll through to the end of our planning items for the this month, we are hiring planning staff. We are looking for uh, a project manager slash planner, uh, as well as a service scheduler. Uh, these two positions uh, are, are most desperately needed. Um, the amenities database update that we'll be working on over the summer through the next quarter uh, is a big part of the service scheduling. Uh, this affects every piece of our operations from uh, our internal uh, sort of brain, if you will, as all the way to our, the new clever ITS and technology systems. It all must be programmed with uh, adequate and reasonable time. And then those, all those technology pieces have to work together. Um, for project, for projects, um, we have a lot of projects here at CAT, and so a project manager uh, will be able to hit the ground running as soon as they get, we, we uh, find the right candidate to come in and work with us. Um, if I can, I do want to move the next slide over to the July equity analysis for uh, the service changes in terms of the reliability schedule that you've heard the planning department talk about over the last couple of months. Uh, as part of both May and June, uh, we have reviewed all of the uh, fixed route system, both uh, service timing, uh, service hours, service mileage. And what we have come up with is that whereas we will still have a few things that were discussed in the May public meeting, um, they were all other routes in the system were considered minor adjustments. Uh, and, and that's where for timing and reliability issues, when you ad adjust one minute, you know, a minute to a minute type of, type of thing, it's really not a major service change. Um, but to talk about major service changes, there are three routes that, that will have uh, impacts. Um, and that is why we conducted a full equity analysis 
and that would be the two dot routes, the seven Forsyth dot and the seven downtown dot. Uh, one part about running an equity analysis is that when we are looking at um, disparate impacts or disproportionate burdens, um, we are comparing it by at a census track level within a quarter mile of the fixed route uh, in question. And once every three years, CAT is required by the FTA to look at these both at a system-wide system level, level in this type of analysis, type of analysis as well as um, on a quarterly basis so when, when, when we change or update our service. Um, so one part about the DOT service, uh, even though it is located in uh, a very diverse community, is that by being a positive impact in the equity analysis, um, there's not necessarily any required mitigation that is that is needed when you're making these sort of positive changes to the fixed route system. To talk about uh, the Route 25 Westlake, um, there is a bit of mitigation to the impact on the route, and that is where uh, in the full equity analysis document that you see in your packet, uh, the Route 25 uh, was within a 15% change for those with low income. It was not necessarily uh, a major service change by impact for those uh, that are minority. Uh, now we know that it is a very diverse area. Uh, so there, it is from a population standpoint, very significantly high for both low income and minority populations. But the average of that and the average change in, in what we have proposed for the Route 25 um, um, can be borne out in the statistics that you see on the, on the presentation before you. Um, one part of mitigating where these changes are being made and the percentage of that change is that we are looking to streamline this route uh, and sort of, I, I wanna use, I kinda wanna use the word clean it up from a timing and scheduling standpoint, we had buses that were like five minutes apart from each other on this route. And then we had buses that were like 50 minutes apart from each other by this route. So um, by, by kind of adjusting the service hours, adjusting the peak vehicles, it triggered a major service change for the Route 25. But um, in reality, we think that it's going to be a better outcome for uh, the folks in the neighborhood that live in that area that utilize that route, because we're looking for this route to have even frequency where the buses will be spaced equally apart from each other. And we want them to run with a better on-time performance. Uh, and we don't want them to be sitting uh, down at the end of the line, at the end of the lap, at the end of the route. There was a lot of extra time in this route so when, when we think about the amount of time that a bus is just sitting and not moving, uh, it's not getting anywhere from point A to point B. So it, it's just not, it's not being utilized in the best way for the, for the folks that need it. Um, and, and in a number standpoint, it, it is, it, it is kind of interesting to say that because of the extra time that was already in the schedule, and now we wanna get the bus physically moving from point A to point B, that mileage isn't gonna change very much at all, but that's where sort of the service adjustment service and the timing adjustment. comes back in. Um, do we have any questions about the equity analysis or, or, how, um, or, or how the major service changes were derived? I don't, I don't have any, but it is very interesting to see see it up close like this. Um, I think times when we've had uh, changes before, we've never really got the um, ability to drill down information like this. So it's very, very interesting. One thing that about doing it this year and making sure that we're we're going through these both at a route by route level as well as system wide is that we will be bringing a full system wide equity analysis to the board uh, later this year in September. Uh, that's that really is to sort of put together a a COVID point in time reference from where we were as a system uh, about three years ago before COVID started and where we are today. Uh, that also helps the planning department staff uh, utilize our system hours and the amount of service we're providing uh, 
as we plan ahead, both in the short term and the midterm, uh, budget purposes, operation purposes, uh, you know, we, we have to sort of plan a certain amount of hours and then look at what service we're providing today. And this is a great way to do it because it does sort of show you where if there were changes or adjustments that were made over COVID, well, this is the this is a way for you to see this is how those changes uh, are affecting the neighborhood of which it is located. So, um, and then finally, to talk just a little bit at the end about the amenities database update, um, because we have uh, a lot of demand for shelters, and that's system wide. Uh, we have the Clever ITS that is uh, getting installed, and it's about, I'd say, at a 75 to 80% project completion. Um, we have the CAT Tracker as part of the Clever ITS that is now live on our website and our system, and there's, we're still working on an app for that. Um, this kind of breaks it down to you know, getting down to the initial bus stop and starting at the stop. Uh, the discussion with Uber, Garden City, uh, all these all these other pieces of the planning puzzle. Um, you know, we want to make sure that our, our data is clean, is precise. Uh, we want to be able to say, you know, here's where the next 25 shelters are going to go for fiscal year 23. We need to know how many shelters we want to order in fiscal year 23. We need to know how many trash cans we want to order in fiscal year 23. Um, how many brackets for signage do we want to order? Those little bitty brackets, they add up when you have 1,300 bus stops in the system. Um, we'll be looking at, we'll be starting to get into how many of our stops meet ADA criteria, um, how many of our stops have uh, no amenities at all, and then we'll, be, we'll also be looking at that from a route by route perspective as well. Um, so that we can sort of get start to clarify that when somebody wants a shelter placed in a certain area, um, you know, we're, we can compare that both to ridership and then also how many other shelters are located nearby. So. Um, and then to, to finalize for both May and June, um, we did, we were able to have the second public meeting to the uh, sir, for the service change, uh, and this was on June seventh, last Tuesday, and we timed that with the fiscal year twenty three budget hearing. We had five attendees here at Cat Central, um, uh, based upon ha having one at the ITC and having one at Cat Central. The planning department will most likely put most of our public meetings at the ITC whenever we possibly can, just for future reference. Um, and that's all from, from the planning department for today, uh, if you all have any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. I don't have uh, questions, but I do, I do just want to say again, the, um, this whole this whole agenda packet and this presentation, um, it's look very, they look nice. They read. It's good. To, it's nice to, to find information. Um, it is a joy, joy to look at. Um, well, thank you. Um, we we've tried to put quite a bit in the calendar. It's been rather busy the last couple of months. We might take a break a little bit in July, and then uh, I foresee we'll be just as equally busy this fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a break. Everybody says that. Next week week will be not as crazy, right? <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I do want to apologize for for the I was I got stuck on a call and I uh, I did not mean to be late to today's meeting. Yeah, no no worries. Uh, um, okay. Um, take us to item four or item item five. Um, item four. Uh, director is in the oh, director's yeah, yeah. digest. <laughs> Uh, there are some Bye. questions, you know, we've been including this um, each time now. If there are questions that come in, there are a couple of questions there. Uh, they come in between meetings. Um, there are a couple of questions there around equity burden. I think you got to hear more in this particular presentation about how we calculate burden and the work that's done in that regard. There was a particular question about 
uh, how we're assessing burden in a floodplain area. But those, those particular questions and answers are included in that Director's Digest Q&A. Um, and if you have any particular comments or questions on any of those, we're glad to um, answer those for you. And then under item five, other committee business, um, these are just the items as we normally report out to you in each committee so that you know what's going on in the other committees as well. Um, we uh, had a discussion uh, in the meeting just prior to this around the FY23 proposed budget operating and capital. Um, as you know, we've been working on that in committees with you and reporting out to you prior to this. We are anticipating, uh, Ms. Cutter and I are really focused keenly on the um, the fiscal cliff that every transit system in the country is facing right now in the next few years. Um, and the lack of um, uh, certainty around federal funds. There are a couple of things that we're doing in that regard though, um, as we look at that one, uh, we're just taking a very fiscally prudent, fiscal integrity kind of approach to this budget that we'll be bringing forward for your approval a bit later in the year. Um, uh, or I guess it'll be the, the, actually a little bit later this month, excuse me. Um, but we are making sure that we are focusing on how we're going to navigate through the upcoming, um, you know, what may be leaner times. We're focused on um, some funding opportunities, and this is like recurring funding opportunities. For example, the ride hailing fee that was discussed and passed in the legislature back in 2020, but has been largely focused um, in the Atlanta area, and, and we think that there's opportunity for us to share in that, and that could be an opportunity for us. Um, we're also looking at um, the POR fees that have been levied in the past, um, and I know that, that those funds are divided um, with the city, but how that could, um, how that, that kind of funding support can, can also become a growth opportunity for us. So we're looking at all the things we can do to make sure that we navigate through these tighter times, that we're prepared for them, well prepared for them, um, and that we continue to make sure we provide excellence and service to those in our community who so uh, deserve it. Um, there's a couple of contracts that are, will be discussed, one's for Remix, the other's for Clever Device. Um, the insurance renewal, which we mentioned one aspect of some of the insurance work earlier in the presentations here, the insurance renewal for property, casualty, liability, workers comp, all that will be um, uh, discussed at the upcoming meeting. And then we'll uh, be asking for another three month extension for the COVID-19 emergency measures. Um, this is just still consistent with what we've been doing. We're still gonna be at full capacity on the um, our buses but we still strongly encourage the use of masks and so forth, um, especially with some of the, the COVID activity that is being seen across the country right now. And then we're very proud to bring forward for the board's approval later this month, the vision and vision statement. Um, this is the great work that you all did during our recent uh, workshop with the board, um, as well as the input of the management team in, in giving, working through developing um, the initial uh, work that, that you then finalized in the workshop. So um, we're using that vision and mission statement literally and everything we do, tying back all of our activities to how does it ultimately support what that vision and mission is with that. So um, it's a, a great tool for us, a great management tool, and it was uh the, the great work of this board that really um, made it made it be uh, made it be so. So thank you very much, and um, that's everything under other committee business. I just lost my agenda. I think we're to adjourn. Okay. All right, all right, okay. okay. Anything else? Any comments? Any comments? Any words? No, sir. All right. All good. Okay. All good. Okay. Um, all right. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you guys again so much for all the information and we'll be seeing you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.